Hi guys, I'm Dan from DB Games. Welcome to the video. Today we're going to be playing through Horizon, the board game. We're going to play it solo. We're going to be putting the video up on the channel as soon as we can. And we're also going to be running a giveaway kindly sponsored by Steam Forge Games who sent me both this game and the copy of the game to give away in a giveaway. So halfway through this video, I'm going to give you a keyword um, and that's going to add extra points for if you're entering in that giveaway. Um, I will put it in the uh, timestamps down below here uh, where that is just to make it a little bit easier to find so you don't have to watch the whole video but obviously do appreciate it if you do watch the video and if you like what we're doing please like this video uh, leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel it really helps us out to get more of these videos made and do more things so thanks for being here let's get this one onto the table and sort out this out so before I start I'm just gonna choose which characters I want to be okay not slightly So before I start, I'm just going to choose which characters to be, and um, I'm thinking the Nora Marksman is closest to what Aloy looks like in the game and what she is, and then the Karja Warriors are the people who um, invented this kind of, um, what's it called, the um, Hunter's Lodge. So that's what the game's kind of recreating, the Hunter's Lodge. So I think it'd be cool to play as these two. Um, in the two-player game, the, or more, two to three player, to four player even, the Osram Forge myth is meant to be a bit overpowered, especially in the competitive mode. So just so you're aware of that, keep an eye on it if you do play competitive. Um, but I'm going to play these two today because they look really cool. So I'm going to set the game up and then get it to the table. Um, see you in a minute. Okay, so now that I've got the characters set up and I've got their minis here just ready for when we do the map. Um, you've got to make sure you take the extra thing that they had to start with. So she has a chill water for the Karja Warrior. And the Nora Marksman starts with some metal shards, which lets us buy up grip going forward. Um, I love the way these are set around in like the circular motion. It looks a bit like the PlayStation menu when you use your right analog stick to choose your different arrows and things. And um, we've got our upgrade decks here ready if we get a successful campaign to get to upgrade each round. And then our heroes decks here where you draw five cards each and they have. Um, this is also their health. So this can be run out and when it does run out you have to well you get knocked out basically but you can perform a craft action as one of your actions uh, reminding you that you only get two actions per turn so what you get to do is put three of your cards from discard back into your deck um, put the top three back in and then shuffle your deck um, so obviously that's integral to staying alive and doing well in this game as well as sneaking around and killing everything and making sure you get enough points each level to get through the levels. So the first thing we have to do is we have to draw from this deck, which is our location deck, and we take three cards. Now the three cards have taken, we check them. Um, they say on the bottom left what animals they've got in them or what beasts. So as you can see, they've all got they've pretty much all got the red eye watches, um, uh, just the regular watches actually. This one has got um, some scrappers in it. The middle one has got some striders in it, and the other one has also got striders in it both way around. So scrappers are a little bit tougher. Um, so I think for the first round, maybe I'll just go with the one of the two that's got the scrapper, not the watch scrapper, the watches and the striders. So whether on A or B or the other way around. And this one has a different terrain type. It's got some terrain in it on all the square spaces. But if you complete this level, you get two extra scrap per hero, which is out of this scavenger deck, which is over here off to the off the side of the camera. Might try and put it here if it's so it's in shot. And then we have to get these three tiles set up and put them on the as we're playing two characters, we'll have it on the two player side. And then we set the enemies on A and B, and any uh, terrain like this one would go on the square or circle or other symbols but we're not having terrain on this one we've chosen this specific site so that's going to be our first map and that will go up here over at the top uh, over here by the light that's helping us get a bit of light because you need five levels the last level is always a hunter's call in the base game we are only doing the base game not the uh expansions yet but we will do some stuff on that so I will take you to the next video in a minute once we've set up the maps and got everything ready and all the minis on there as well. So see you in a second. 
So to start with, um, it's going to be quite difficult to fit this all on camera. So we're going to focus mainly on the map up here. We do have the um, the enemy information down here and their cards. So if they see you and then our heroes have to come on the squares over here somewhere. I think it would be better starting closer both together in the hidden grass here. This is a hidden grass symbol. So if you're in an adjacent square, you cannot be seen. Normally, if you are in an adjacent square, you can be seen and that will trigger the enemy to see you and then start coming at you. If they are aware of your location, which is what these cards are for, then you flip these and this is their behavior once they are aware, aware of you and your companions. So they come after the person that they're aware of or the nearest person. Um, and then we've got our uh, scrap pile here. You get told what things you do for knocking off other things on the enemy. There's nothing you can knock off on the watchers. And the strider you can knock off his blaze canister which then gives him a fire damage. Uh, you have to do two damage onto it. If you do that will take two off his health which is six. And then he has a shield of two which isn't doesn't affect the, um, the canister or any A or B items you're trying to take off the animals. Um, but it does do two additional damage to him if you manage to hit it for two damage. If you only hit it for half, then you damage it, but you don't knock it off. Um, but obviously, ideally, you want to knock it off and try and get him as close to being killed as possible. And on this um, level, this shows us that we need to score at least two points. Uh, no, we get two scrap if we do it, and we need to score at least two points due to the top corner value here to get through the level. Um, each of the watcher, watchers are worth one, I think. So yeah, one point. And the striders are also only worth one point. So if I can kill off both of the watchers, then I don't need to really do much. But if you do kill off the strider as well, you get an extra scrap card for doing it. So it might be worth doing it to try and get some upgrades and things, but it might not. It might be easier just to kill both the watchers and then get out of the level and get ready for the next part. So I'm going to just move the camera a bit up so we can see the full map. Um, hopefully you can see the purple lines. They represent the paths the animals take on their turns. And each of our heroes is dealt five of these cards from their deck, which have been shuffled. And then we, you can use those with things like freeze bombs, uh, blazing strike. If the target suffers a condition at the start of this attack, inflict two damage extra. And follow up play after this hunter inflicts a condition with an attack to move onto the same square as the target and perform a free melee attack. Now, none of my things I don't think are going to give me extra stuff unless I do an, uh, a freeze bomb. The freeze bombs will give him uh, frozen if I discard the chill water I have here. Or they will also do a freeze if they get the critical hit symbol from the black dice. Which is a bit of mainly critical hits, but half of it is misses as well. The black dice is quite good, but also half bad. And then the Nora, Spear and Bow Hunter. You take her five out. She will have Precision Strike. This If this attack targets a component, ignore the armor value. Um, she's got a Hunter Arrow, which gives a plus one, plus one orange dice when she fires the bow. Um, a sliding shot, the hunter may make a dodge before checking the range of this attack. If the hunter kills an enemy during this activation, they gain an additional glory point. The play after this hunter destroys a component to draw a card from the deck. And then another hunter bow, uh, hunter arrow. So these are good for doing additional damage. But for the first level, we try and want to maybe try and conserve some of our cards. Because cards are also, like I say, health. And the card warrior has only got 14 health. Or cards to start with and the Nora Marksman's got 16. So we'll try and take out both the watchers I think and then see how we fare. The watchers have got four health. So the um the Carja Halberd will do potentially three damage if we can hit with it. Um and you can move one square with the halberd as well when you attack. If you get a critical space you critical hit with it you can move three spaces. Which is nice. You have to be next to them to do that with the halberd. Um, and melee attacks. 
don't require any ammunition cards and you can move one square before you move so if there's any weird rules you think I'm doing a bit weird or strange then let's uh, hopefully get them correct um, so to start with I can move an attack with the card your halberd if I want that would then hit it for whatever I get on the orange and blue dice um, it has to be in the range and if I get a critical I can then move three spaces as well might be handy because you attack one then move three spaces you can get into the grass over here get you closer to the other enemy or I could use some freeze bombs which I'm kind of looking at now or the blazing strike which I don't think is necessary so yeah, for my first turn with the card your warrior I think it might be prudent to attack for blue and an orange uh, hopefully you're getting four damage but this does have a shield um, and when this enemy is alert any non-alert enemies in adjacent squares become alert but there's none in adjacent squares so we should be all right so I'm considering maybe attacking him with the bow instead which is a drag target component no he hasn't got component to attack the bow gives you two orange to, to fire and then if I use an arrow as well it'll use an extra orange um, so I might play that instead to start with I'm going to put that into my discard for the hunter play an extra orange there is two orange on the hunter bow so i'm going to roll three orange here and hope for good outcomes so i got two crits uh one miss so the critical strike do two damage so the enemy is unfortunately still alive because he has one shield so he's taking four damage but he's got a shield so Unfortunately, he's got one, two, three damage. And now, because I've attacked him, he will become alert. Um, so, he gets one of those symbols as well. What I wish to do now is to move. I've still got a second move before he gets his activation. So, I might as well just go in and try and hit him for damage um, which will give me my one melee attack so I don't, I'm not going to use any other cards to do that with I still get to roll two orange uh, if I get a critical hit then it hits for one damage without taking off anything and I've only hit him for one so he's still alive which is quite annoying um, so after this action, the enemy is alert. If there's a non-alert enemy within two squares, no, then move one towards the closest hunter. I'm already next to the closest hunter, and I will. Do, it will do four damage to me on uh, which is quite nasty melee attack. Um, so the range is still zero, and then the attack is for four. Now. That means I have to discard four cards, which is nasty. I'm trying to see if I can do any. I can do my my shield is this card for Nora. She has Nora Protect, uh, Light Protect. So she rolls two orange dice when she gets attacked. So we are going to roll the two. Um, it's off camera, finally. Uh, so I got a critical and a hit. So the hit would block off one damage and the critical will block three. So that's four damage I've blocked, which means I don't have to actually discard any cards, which is nice. Um, I might move these cards over so I can get this onto screen a bit more. That would be nicer if I can actually see what the rolls are coming out as on the camera. Um, so not terrible, still alive, but We've got now an attack with the card, your warrior, who can do the halberd attack maybe. And um, I don't need to do the freeze bomb. It doesn't seem like it's necessary. Freeze bombs would let you ignore the enemy's armor value. But I get to roll two if I use the halberd. And she's got an orange and a blue. So I'm going to move into attack with her. Orange and a blue. Wall on camera, as you can see, I got a double hit on the two 
and three. So I've got three damage. It has one shield and only one health left. This guy is dead as a dodo. So he's down. Now what I need to do then is he's one point. We need another point. So we need to go after the other guy over there. Uh, if I move for one movement, then I will not alert the enemy because if I run through spaces and I'm adjacent to him, he will be alert and then he will attack me. But I want to just kind of creep up here and get to the watcher. So I'm going to move one space with the Karja warrior. And then it is the... Oh, I didn't activate before, actually. These other enemies should have activated on the last turn, so they should have done like this. That meant I could run here because he would be not adjacent anymore and be out of my space. Um, and then they would move now on their turn after that. So he moves here. He moves here. Uh, the Nora Marksman is going to run forward two spaces for his the special run. Will not get detected yet because he's not in any adjacent spaces that he ran through. And then he's within two space, or she is even, within two spaces of the enemy. The hunter bow can be shot from within two spaces. Um, uh, so, the critical hit, they have to suddenly destroy the component to salvage, draw a card from the salvage deck. I could play this critical hit thing and try and kill him with the bow. Uh, but... I don't feel like I will kill it because it's got four health and I need it two crits. So I'm going to play the Hunter Arrow out of my hand, which gives me, as you can see, gives me one extra orange dice. Doesn't add any extra range or anything, but it gives me again, like before, an extra dice. And it's got no components, so I'll end up rolling three of these orange. Here's hoping for the best. So we got three damage. So he again is now alert. So his figure will follow these rules he's going to be alert he's taken two damage because he's got one shield and he's only got two health now left um it says is there any non-alert enemies within two squares and there's not he's more than two squares away it can be diagonal or straight so it could be there there but he's actually three squares away so that's not him he's going to activate first he can only move one space towards the nearest hunter and his range on his attack is only zero. So he can't actually attack me. So he's going to move across like this and get as close as possible to me. But can't actually hit me yet, which is great for me. Um, because that means that's the end of his turn. And then this guy will move as if nothing's going on. Because he's unaware of life in general, it seems. And then we're back to the Karja with the Halberd. So for now, I don't feel like I need to use the Sling. Or any extra shots I get to oh right there I also forgot to draw a card before for the scrap you get from the watcher the watcher was killed by the bow woman so she gets another scrap which actually gave me this thing called ancient chime it says discard this card to pay any one resource cost when purchasing an item during the merchant step so the merchant step is the next stage after this level so that's nice, a little bonus, you can buy a free card, uh, one cost, oh well, use it for a resource cost. So anything I need, I can use, so that's really good. Uh, but the card is about to hopefully get a kill here with the halberd. So her halberd gives, as you can see on the card, it gives zero range, an orange and a blue dice. And if you get a critical, you get to move three spaces as well. So what we can do is roll I don't think I've got any extra cards that actually add to the halberd. These are freeze bombs for the sling. And this is a blazing strike if the target suffers a condition at the start of this attack inflicts your damage. And I can't actually do damage with anything else anyway. So uh, I'll just roll the orange and blue. Hope for the best. And then see. There we go. So we've got three damage. Again, he's got one shield and he takes two extra damage. That's the full four we need to kill him off. So as you can see, this guy's the weakest enemy and he's not been easy to kill. So we've been trying to be a bit good with our resources and not spend any extra cards. 
you, you draw up to five cards at the start of every turn as well. Um, and then that's normally it, but he's now dead. That gives us the second score. We get one salvage card for it. He's got she's got some metal shards now. And so therefore the card warrior has some chill water and metal shards. And the Nora Marksman has got some ancient chimes and metal shards. So we'll come to the next phase of the game now. I'm gonna pause it here and go to the end phase of part one. So the first stage of the um, camp st campfire stages, you normally would do victory points if it's competitive, but um, I'd recommend not playing competitive. So the idea is that if you do a level one level and you complete it, you get to upgrade to a level one upgrade. So you normally start with two different options. There's elusive for the card warrior or there's prideful. Now, Elusive gives you two cards that can add to your deck. After resolving an evade roll, this hunter may perform a sprint action instead of dodging. And Prideful, which uh, this hunter may discard one glory point to re-roll an attack. If the re-rolled attack either destroys a component or kills the target, this hunter gains an additional glory point. So that's all about battling in the competitive side. So I'm going to take this Elusive because that will add to our deck. And not only will it add to our deck, but it also gets our deck up to 16 cards. So we end up with more health so i'm going to put these in here and i'm going to shuffle them together and the options for the nora marksman are you can get a weapon a card your bow or you can get the trait scavenger so let's have a little look at those i do need these um tokens which i haven't got out yet as well these little tokens uh so you start there with those and then the other ones are in here Get them out. So I need the red one. They're quite fiddly little fellas. That one's been done. We've take, taken the two elusive. That marks that there. And this one is marked as either we take the scavenger trait, which when another, another kill, hunter kills an enemy, you may draw a card, or we take the card your bow, which lets you roll a blue dice. Now the blue dice have got single double and triple on them so you're kind of guaranteeing at least one damage but you're only getting one roll it also says you've got a critical hit so if you use a bow an arrow to give you an orange dice you get four damage but you're not going to have this card as you can see here it's two it's got two things you can have two upgrades on it as well though so i'm thinking of going for that because it seems good and this one, if another hunter kills an enemy, you may draw from the salvage deck. Seems good, but hmm. I'm going to take the card your bow, upgrade my bow so I can use blue dice. So I always like having extra weapons in the game and more powerful weapons. So that's why I've chosen that. But obviously you may choose to go other ways if, if you're playing. 100% down to the players. And then the next level is you can buy something from the level 1 shop. These are all level one cards. There's a level two and a level three uh, called the merchant. So the merchant shop has to lay out cards from the deck uh, matching the encounter level. And you've got to do one armor, one weapon, two mods, two ammunition and one miscellaneous. So it's got to be, that's a miscellaneous. Um, that is also a miscellaneous, so it won't go into this deck. So let's put them as discards over here. I'll try and move this camera up a little bit. So that's a miscellaneous, that's an ammo type, uh, that's another uh, another shockwire ammo, annoying. Uh, fire ammo, can't have that because we've already got two types of ammunition out. And this is where it can be a little bit annoying because this ammunition has got a weapon that neither of us have. So it doesn't really make sense to keep that out, so it doesn't explain that in the rules. So. The way I play it is that this fire bow arrow is something I can actually use. The shock wire arrow has got the weapon you use it for there, so it doesn't really work with either of these weapons or any of the weapons I've got. So I don't have them as things you can buy in the actual game. We come up with another fire bow arrow, so yeah, okay, that's going to have to go out because the Nora spear, no, the card you hunter bow can use that. But it's very tricky to see between because the that's the bow color there and then the bow on here is in white 
but sometimes it can be hard to see that and see what's going on but these are still not being used we need some other stuff still firebomb is ammo trip caster so that's another weapon again whether we want to have a trip caster i guess you could buy a trip caster and change your weapon outload but that's what we can do now uh, we've got a rattler which is another weapon i think uh carger hunter bow another ammo we need some more oh there's an upgrade so we have a weapon some ammo one upgrade we need two we need another upgrade to come out oh, there we got another upgrade and we need an armor i think as well now so let's just go through these and see if we can find an armor uh seems like they're not coming out let's shuffle these but oh there we go banu light ice armor is our choice of things we can buy so we can buy these using the cost in the top right hand corner so the trip caster is for two shards which neither of us have but you can spend chill water as shards if you want and you can spend this ancient chimes as shards too the shard gambler box this card is not added to your deck you shuffle this card back into the merchant deck after the merchant deck is concluded then draw two cards from the salvage deck um it seems okay handling coil this hunter may re-roll a single die when performing an attack with this weapon so that's quite nice re-rolling dice um especially the orange ones or the black one that's got nothing on it um don't have a lot of stuff with the black dice on it though so the orange ones might be good for the sling or for the Nora Spear, the Cardio Hunter bow actually. I oh, know it's not, yeah, but it does have an orange on it. The Nora Spear though is too orange. That might be nice for the Nora Marksman to have a bit of handling. Um, I don't know why I'm shuffling these, I don't need them now. Um, resist the range we so you can reduce the damage suffered by this hunter by, from range attack by one so that's going to be good for the Karja because she's only got one roll of one orange for her dodge so I may take that and then the fire arrows also might be good for with the bow for the Nora so I might buy one of those if I can I uh, can't can't afford the double cost to get the reroller um, so I might just buy uh, buy a fire arrow to go in the deck. That'll have to be re-sorted in a minute. That was paid with the shard and something else. I don't know what else to get. Um, I don't want the trip caster. I think the card your warrior needs some more resistance for um, definitely needs more resistance to attacks. That'll give us more health, kind of, hopefully, to get through the game. But she could also do with a bit of something else as well. Rerolling would have been good, but I haven't got two costs to spend on that reroll. Um, she could take the Banuk Light Armor as well and get a black roll instead of an orange. And the blacks are risky. There's even more blanks on the black than there's on the orange. There's only one blank on the orange, so I'll stick with that. Keep a chill water for her card, maybe. And I'm going to spend this one for the Nora Warrior, though, to get something, because... Oh, no, I can't. can't afford anything, really. I'll keep all of that for now. Till later on. So we've got one upgrade each, but one's a card. I could get another fire arrow, actually. That might be useful. It gives me more health as well, thinking about it. And the option to give fire onto some stuff. Whereas the arrows I've got aren't fire, they're just regular hunter arrows, so um, shuffle them in. And we've got an extra bit of help for the card you worry for next level. So that's the end of the phase. Uh, let's take it to part two. Hi guys, so on Instagram I'm doing a giveaway for Horizon. The board game um, is going to be giving away one complete copy, brand new and sealed, from Steamforge Games, who have sponsored this giveaway. And the keyword that I need you to 
let me know in my Instagram inbox is Kaja. So send me an inbox message saying Kaja. If you need to, it's spelt there on the camera, C-A-R-J-A. And please send me that message. That will get you two extra entries into the competition. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please also leave a like on the video and um, comment in the video down below what you liked, how you think it is. I think the camera angle needs a bit of work. I think it needs a bit. I need a bit more space here, really, ideally. Potentially more cameras, another camera, something better. But obviously, if you think there's other stuff that need, is needed, please let me know. And if you've liked these videos and you like what I'm doing and these games that I've been playing on the channel, please leave a subscribe as well. It really helps. And if you do subscribe, then you'll get extra entries into the giveaway as well. So thanks for watching the video. I've been Dan. See you on the next one.